Now let's focus on some airplane problems as it relates to related rates. An airplane is flying horizontally with a speed of 400 miles per hour at an altitude of 3 miles above a radar station. Let's draw a picture. So let's say this is the ground and we're going to say this is the radar station. And let's say this is the airplane. And so it's traveling horizontally, let's say in this direction. And we could turn this into a right triangle. Let's call this X, Y, and Z. So the airplane is moving at 400 miles per hour horizontally. So X is increasing by 400 miles every hour. So we have dx dt. Our goal is to calculate how fast the distance between the plane and the radar station, how fast that's changing when the plane is 5 miles away from the radar station. So eventually the plane is going to be here at some point. And y is equal to 3 because the plane is traveling at an altitude of 3 miles above the radar station. But at some point, it's going to be 5 miles away. It's not going to be 5 miles away at, let's say, point A. At point A, it's 3 miles away. But somewhere at point B, it's going to be 5 miles away. And 5 is represented by the letter Z. That's going to be the direct distance between the plane at some point in the future and the radar station. So z is equal to 5, y is equal to 3. We don't have the value of x, nor do we know what dy dt is. But our goal in this problem is to calculate dz dt, since z is the distance between the plane and the radar station. And we want to find out how fast z is changing with respect to time. Now, what should we do in this problem? How can we go about solving it? Now the first thing we need to realize is that y is not a variable, it's a constant. The plane will always be 3 miles above the radar station in the vertical direction. The altitude will not change, it's always going to be... I'm not sure what just happened there. But the plane will always be 3 miles above the ground. So since y doesn't change, dy dt is 0. Now we need to calculate x, and so we have a right triangle, therefore z squared is equal to x squared plus y squared, the same way as c squared is a squared plus b squared, according to the Pythagorean theorem. Now z is 5, and y is 3. 5 squared is 25, 3 squared, or 3 times 3, that's 9. 25 minus 9 is 16, and the square root of 16 is 4, so x is equal to 4. So now that we have x, we can now calculate dz dt. So using the same formula, let's perform implicit differentiation, but with respect to time. The derivative of z squared is going to be 2z times dz dt. And the derivative of x squared is going to be 2x dx dt. Now the derivative of y squared is going to be 0 because y is a constant. If you do 2y dy dt, dy dt is still 0, so the whole thing is going to be 0. Now let's divide both sides by 2. So z is 5, x is 4, and dx dt is 400. So let's divide both sides by 5, and this should give us the answer. So 400 divided by 5. 40 divided by 5 is 8. So 400 divided by 5 is 80, and 80 times 4 is 320. And so this is the final answer. It's 320 miles per hour. So that's the rate at which the distance between the plane and the radar station is changing. Number 2. 
two airplanes are about to intersect at a single point. The first plane is traveling west at 400 miles per hour and is currently 160 miles east from the convergence point. The second plane is traveling south at 750 miles per hour and is currently 300 miles north from the convergence point. At what rate is the distance between the two planes changing? So let's draw a picture. So let's say this is the convergence point and we have a plane traveling south and another plane traveling west. So the first plane is currently, let me draw a right triangle because these problems they always deal with right triangles. Let's call this plane number one and plane number two. So the first plane we can see that it's traveling west and it's moving at 400 miles per hour and it's currently 160 miles east of this convergence point. Let's call this X and this is Y. And Z is going to be the distance between them. The second plane is 300 miles north of the convergence point but it's traveling south at 750 miles per hour. So in this problem we can see that X is 160 and Y is 300. We don't currently have the value of Z but we do know DX DT. What's DX DT and DY DT in this problem? Now DX DT is negative 400 and the reason why it's a negative is because as the plane travels towards the convergence point, x is decreasing. That side of the triangle is getting shorter. And so because x is decreasing, dx dt is negative. Now for dy dt, y is also decreasing as the second plane travels south. So dy dt is a negative. It's going to be negative 750. The goal of this problem is to calculate dz dt. That's what we want to do. So we don't need this picture anymore, and so we can get rid of it. Now let's calculate z before we calculate dz dt. Just like the last problem, we know that z squared is equal to x squared plus y squared. x in this example is 160, and y is 300. One sixty squared, that's 25,600. And 300 squared is 90,000. So if we add these two numbers, we're going to get 115,600. And so that's equal to z squared. So we have to take the square root of both sides. The square root of 115,600 is 340. So now that we have the value of z, we can now focus on getting dz dt. So what we're going to do is differentiate this equation with respect to time. And so we're going to have 2z dz dt, and that's equal to 2x dx dt plus 2y dy dt. Now let's divide everything by 2. And now we can plug in the information that we have. So z is 340 times dz dt. x is positive 160. dx dt is negative 400. y is 300. And dy dt, that's negative 750. 160 times negative 400 plus 300 times negative 750. That's equal to negative 289,000. And to get dz dt, we need to divide both sides by 340. So dz dt 
is equal to negative 850 miles per hour. So that's the final answer. And there is another way in which you can get this answer as well. So for this problem, where x, y, and z are all variables, none of them are constants, this holds true. It turns out that dz dt squared is equal to dx dt squared plus dy over dt squared. So we know that dx dt is negative 400. When you square it, it becomes positive. dy dt is negative 750. So 400 squared, which is 160,000, plus 750 squared, that's 562,500. And then add in those two numbers. That's going to be 722,500. So that's equal to dz over dt squared. So now let's take the square root of both sides. If you take the square root of 722500, the calculator will give you 850. But keep in mind, when you take the square root of a number, you get two possible answers, plus or minus 850. But based on this problem, because the two planes are converging towards a point, the distance between them is decreasing because the planes are getting closer. And so we know that dz dt has to be negative. So this is the final answer. This is just another way to get the same answer.